Hi guys, um, my name is Arthur Cassidy, uh, I'm a social psychologist and what I want to talk to you about tonight is really how do I grasp and cope with the whole idea of going up into university? What is expected of me by the tutors in terms of examinations and essays? What is it like trying to survive as a student after freshest week is over? Well, first of all, it is a major trauma for many students coming up to university, especially leaving home. Uh, you normally, in sixth form, you will have many, many of your students with you. And uh, going up to university, you find you have less students with you, moving from your own hometown. Uh, you're going up into university and you're going to meet new people with new values, new attitudes. And that can be a very exciting time. Exciting in the sense, you know, that you're beginning to meet people and learn from them and them from you. So... Number one, tip one is change your attitudes. Try and create more positive attitudes towards people and those from whom you work with and those whom you live with in, in usually student halls and, and maybe even moving into a flat or apartment. So number one, it is a matter of changing your attitude. See it as a challenge. See it as exciting, an adventure. However, with adventure and with the challenge comes work, comes problems. And one of the major problems that you'll find going up to university is maturity. University in the first year is a maturing experience. You're expected to adapt your attitudes away from sixth form and A-levels into meeting university tutors, people like myself, personal tutors, pastor tutors, and people who you will find strange, difficult, because you might not see them for most of the academic week outside lectures. And so it is... A mixture of fun, excitement and very, very hard work. But let's focus first of all on moving away from home. Moving away from home means, for many of the students I have seen and worked with, it means homesickness, loneliness, um, conforming to the new student peer group who maybe don't bring their families for maybe uh, two or three weeks after moving up to university. In terms of positive mental health, it's a very important thing for you to keep in contact with your parents uh, and with your friends and with your peers. And for those you've left behind at sixth form, good thing to keep in contact with them and, and really to, um, rather than texting, better to talk to them, go on to Skype, see them face to face if you can meet up with them again and maybe nip back home at weekends if you can afford it. Or if you're away from England uh, or Northern Ireland, uh, maybe try and get over maybe a, a, a very cheap, cheap um, breakaway weekend, this type of thing. And so uh, part of the thing is letting go. It is fleeing the nest syndrome, as we call it. Parents also have got to adapt because in some cases, parents, and indeed many parents that I speak to, they find a great void in the house when you're not about so for them, they can get very lonely. And so they do tend to intrude maybe maybe too much into a new university life by making frequent phone calls and text messages, etc. Good to reason with them and let them know that um, you have so much to do, you so much to learn, new ways of studying, new ways of, of uh, doing research, new ways of meeting new friends. And so a good thing is to... Keep the communication lines open with the, the parents. Do show them that respect. And when moving in with other students, try and learn from them because they will definitely want to be learning from you. As I find it when I was a university student, a great excitement really trying to learn from people from different cultures about their lifestyles, their culture, their families. Try and learn a new instrument, uh, dry things you hadn't an opportunity to do before. Maybe join the university drama society, uh, take up horse riding, take up most of the sports as much as you can. But remember, the point one, you are there to get a degree. And getting an honours degree in whatever your subject might be, whether you're going to law, medicine, psychology, technology, engineering, law, finance, whatever it might be, give it 100%. Change your attitude to say, I can do it. Keep believing in yourself and you will get there. Point two, your university lecturer um, will be one who is an expert in his or her field, they will be extremely knowledgeable. They will have taught in many different universities for several years at a time. And they will themselves have been, obviously, university students, so they know what you're going through. 
take them into your confidence. Um, many are very formal. In some other universities, they are in first name terms. So you might find that quite a change from grammar school. The other thing you might want to do is to try and inculcate a sense of discipline whereby you are going to focus on producing good quality essays and assignments during the research, um, working with groups, uh, working alone on your own initiative, finding that degree of self-motivation to really know what you're talking about. And there's anything that a lecturer wants to know when they're marking a student's work is, do you know what you're talking about? And that means spending your time wisely, take regular coffee breaks, but don't get caught up so much in student activities that your academic life goes to the wall. You're there to get that honours degree. So number one, keep believing in yourself. Meet other people. Try and love them and accept them. And try and focus a lot on building up knowledge, building up expertise in your field. We do that by going online, doing online searches, keeping abreast of what's happening in terms of current events and trying to link these into your own particular um, theoretical discipline, whether it be law, whether it be medicine, whether it be engineering or whatever. Keeping abreast of world events in your own field is very important, as I've got to keep abreast of what's happening in my own field of psychology. Uh, and that's very important when it comes to trying to put together essays and assignments. Third point is read books. Read books as a basis of preparing assignments before you move up to academic journals. The difference between the book and the journal is the book gives you a general introduction to the area that you want to learn about. Then you're able to move secondly up to the journal articles that will be referred to in the university lectures by your tutors. So the next thing is, um, don't try to take in too much. How do you read? Read two pages, three pages, quite quickly, glance over them, try, look at the subheadings, which are a good indicator as to what's going to follow in the paragraph. So use the subheadings very wisely, and then after you use the subheadings, read them again, read each page more slowly, try and recall the past or previous three uh, paragraphs. What are the key points? Use a card or index system to make notes of the key points in each paragraph, so that when you've read the chapter, you have a list of systematic points that you've made that you know about. Second point here is about understanding the major point of controversies. What evidence do we look for? Well, university assignments are based on objective evidence, whether it be from biology, psychology, law, medicine, engineering, or whatever. It's about theories, it's about research findings, it's about hard evidence. And so university life is about building up knowledge, being proud of that knowledge base that you're building up over the years. What we do then is to try and structure our lives, try to structure the assignment, try and structure what it is we're asked to do so that we can tell the university tutor, him or her, you know, what we actually do know about the topic. Do we know about the latest controversies? Do we know about the latest critical debates in the topic? And this is what does get good marks in university, knowing the points of controversy, the major theoretical debates knowing the concepts, knowing the findings, being able to talk about these to your friends in seminars in the coffee bar. Talk to your tutor. When you go to a tutor for advice, go armed with knowledge. Go with headings. Uh, tutors do like, we like to hear students coming in with ideas. They don't always have to be right. But go with some sort of idea about what it is you would like to investigate, why you think is a major problem, whether it be in medicine, whether it be in law or whatever. And once we do that, then that will impress the tutor, knowing that you do know about the latest research or over the past two to three years or something which he might find or she might find intriguing and might have little knowledge about. So it's very good and very important to take them into your confidence because they want to do the same with you. Thirdly, socialising. We all go up to university to really enjoy socialising, enjoy their life. Student life is there to be enjoyed. Once you've done the hard work, reward yourself with going out with your friends, chilling out at the coffee bars, the disco, the nightclubs, wherever you're going. But remember, university life and the social aspects can also be quite dangerous for some students. 
we can get involved in the drug scene. We can get caught up with all sorts of, of nightlife that in some cases can be injurious to your psychological health. Um, the good thing is to simply be wise. Be wise, stay together with your friends, look after your friends, and also be aware, be fully aware of what's happening. In relationships, the most important thing is that uh, relationships can take control of your life. Love, sex, and relationships can be very demanding at university. And what we do is we want you to try and understand that you're there, again, to build up a career. And many students can, that I see, very often get trapped in emotional difficulties in relationships, and they find it extremely difficult uh, in order to break up. And if they do break up or break off, then they end up with clinical depressions, anxiety disorders, and so on. And what we do expect is for, for students to be wise about how they handle and cope with relationships. It's going to happen. And so we need to know you know, what are the ground rules for a relationship? Do you really, are you happy with a friendship? But then there are rules for friendship as there are for, for love and emotional connections. So look at my website because I will be putting on some more topics and ideas about how to cope with relationships in university. Next thing is that um, when we get results, when we come to examinations and tests and module tests, most thing is know the plan Get your plan well sealed, well thought out, so you know what time you have uh, uh, available for part-time work jobs, and keep a good time management plan. Clearly ahead, put it on your wall of your study. Make sure you like adequate time for earning money as your part-time job, adequate time for study, adequate time for relaxation and relationships. It's all about a healthy balance. I hope and wish you well uh, coming up to uh, your examinations. Most important thing is little and often. And I wish you good success. Goodbye.